Hey, this is Magnar, and welcome back to my modding tutorials for uh, Rome 2 and Attila Total War. Uh, in this episode, I'll be showing you how to mod uh, AI armies and the composition of the units in those armies and how the AI determines which units it will recruit into those armies. So I've created a uh, small pack here uh, with all the tables that are needed. The tables are found in Attila. They'll find, you'll find them in your data pack here. So you, Total War Attila data, data of course, and for Rome 2 it'll be your same location, but Total War Rome 2. And it'll be not in your data, but in your data Rome 2 pack. Okay, so the tables we're going to want are these ones here. You're going to need your CI construction system categories table. And then all of the CDI are military generator configs. We'll also, if you're going to create your own uh, custom configs, which I'll get to a bit later, uh, you will also need to add that to the start pause. Okay, so let's start from the units and we'll work our way up into how it's all organized. So if we go to here, we have... Uh, CDIR military generator unit qualities. And here we have a list of all the different units in the game, uh, the group they're assigned to, and a quality rating. Now the way the AI recruits units, it's based on, firstly, it tries to fill the template. It, it, essentially you create these templates uh, for an AI army. Uh, you assign that template to uh, the AI personality or the, the configuration that it uses to uh, calculate its army, what it, what it should recruit and how it should compose its army. Uh, and then you add, those, add units to those different categories which make up that template. So if we have a look uh, at template, we can see here these are different groups of units, so melee cavalry, missile cavalry, and they're assigned to, uh, that's what here, all the different categories assigned to a template. And that template is then assigned to a faction. Uh, so the way it works, firstly, the AI will try to match the template if it has enough money. Uh, and within that same category, it will recruit the units with the highest uh, quality relative to cost. I think it's relative to cost, but the higher the quality within that category, it will recruit that unit. If you look back here, you can see that the number of units it recruits in each category is determined by uh, a ratio. You can change that ratio to be whatever you like. So here, for instance, in the default land uh, template, all these units are used in a ratio of one to one. So it will try to have equal number of every single unit. And once it fills a category, it will then look to, an it'll look to another category and it will try to fill that category with the best quality units it can get. If it does not have enough money, uh, it will look to just buy the cheapest or whatever unit it can afford outside of the template. So the template is not concrete, it is just kind of a suggestion, a guideline, but if the AI cannot afford it, it will just get the cheapest one, which will be a lot of the reason why you see a lot of armies with just slingers or some kind of really cheap unit. It's because the AI has no, not much money uh, or not much money in its spending cap because there's a certain amount of money that, that's defined how much the AI can spend of its total income on military. And so if it hasn't got much, then it'll, it'll start spending it on crappy units. Uh, and that's a lot of the reason why you find some armies full of crappy units is because the AI has no money. Okay, so each of these categories, we can, we can choose which units go to that category. And we do that here in the military generator unit qualities table. So here we have the group, uh, the, the unit grouping, and we have all the different units in the game. So you scroll down, you can see there's almost 500, and that's how many units are in Attila. Uh, Rome 2 has more than that and a quality assigned to each unit. So remember that quality is only used to compare units within a set in the same category. So if you have your artillery having all 20,000 plus, 
and your cavalry and melee having all between 10 and 20, it's not really going to affect too much the because the, the, the cavalry melee will only be compared to the other cavalry melee units. Okay, so once you've assigned your unit to the group, we then, well, you firstly have to, uh, okay, if you want to create a custom group, all you have to do is come into this table here, you put in your new group, let's call it new group. Uh, for a new group, we, if we're going to add a group, we don't want to have the table the same, we're going to just change that, so let's rename this to new Okay, fragment your tables when you're adding stuff. Don't have the vanilla stuff that you're not editing in there, as I say with pretty much every tutorial, but it's very important to do it this way for compatibility and some other reasons, also for maintaining it. Okay, so we get our new group, and now say we want to uh, change which, so we'll change the onaga. The desert onaga will now be assigned to new group, and so will the eastern onaga. Everything else can stay the same, so we're going to delete everything else. And we look here, we can say, that, okay, the Eastern Onager will be recruited over the Desert Onager if uh, they're both available. Otherwise, they just get whatever. Okay, then we rename the table. Fragment it. Oh, that wasn't really what I wanted, was it? Okay, rename the table. Now it's fragmented. Okay, so we've got a new group. We've assigned two units to that new group. Uh, this will probably actually... Cr I'm not sure this will work because I've actually taken two units that already exist and assigned them to two different groups because I haven't deleted the vanilla entries. So I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I think you can only uh, assign a unit to one group. I haven't tested that. It might be possible to, say, uh, to add them to multiple groups. Uh, if someone feels like testing that and let me know, that'd be great. Okay, so anyway, ignoring that I accidentally deleted all the the, the other table where I actually needed to just uh, edit it and keep the vanilla name, you assign your unit to the new group, you give it a quality relative to the other units in that group, then we assign the group to a template. The template in the template ratio, we'll grab our new group, copy that, and let's say we want to add the new group to land units. Right, instead of whatever was there before. Then we have to, the land unit uh, template, the template that we've just edited, we want to assign to a, uh, a config key. The templates, we can create our own template if we like. We just have to create a key in here. So we can actually do that instead. So let's go new template. Might be a bit better. Okay, so we have a new template. Let's create it here. We're going to have an art artillery only template. So I've deleted all the vanilla entries in here. I just wanted to add my own. So I'm going to now have to rename it okay so now we've got our new group key assigned to our new template with uh, the units we assigned to it uh, and now we have to assign the template we've made to a config key the config key is given to the faction, and that's done in the start pos, which we'll get to right at the end. So for starters, let's just say we're going to, rather than creating a new config key, oh, I guess we can create a new config key. Let's do it. We're creating everything else new. Let's create a new config key. Uh, new config. probably won't need to actually create a new config very often unless you're going to go and try to make every single faction different, uh, which we did in uh, Bay Victus mod, which we've been doing in Bay Victus mod uh, for Rome 2, but most mods won't need to go this far with it. So then we add our, our config key in here. We'll just overwrite the Arabian ones. Then we want to grab our template. 
our new template and we're going to put it in to overwrite the land unit. So this config key, this faction, whichever we give it to, will only recruit uh, artillery units when it can and if it can't afford them then it will get crappy units like uh, skirmishers or whatever they, they have that is cheap. Okay. Now we need to of course fragment these as well. Save. Okay, so now I've done that. The other part is uh, we can create. Oh, we have we have created. We've created this new uh, military generated group. Now, when we do that, we also have to look here in the CAI construction system categories table. Now, what this does here, uh, this group here, the CAI construction system category, uh, is assigned to different buildings so that the AI knows which units it can recruit from which buildings. Probably don't need to go and edit, create new ones of these, although you can. Uh, rather we just, instead of, yeah, instead of doing to create new ones, we're just going to add what we've, our new group that we've created, and we're going to add it to uh, one of these system category groups. So we'll just go to the land group, and we'll give it a new name. Call it uh, new artillery. Good. So now the AI will know that buildings that can recruit land units will be able to recruit our the units assigned in our group. Okay, so that's all the DB stuff set up. Of course, we have to delete that. Okay, that's all the DB set set up. Now we're going to grab the campaign uh, start pause. Uh, we're going to firstly go add. Oops, no, not that. Let's go add. Uh, add an empty directory and call it. It's called uh, campaigns. And then within that, we've got. We can add directory. Okay, so let's go find. Okay, we're now data. For Attila, we want to go into our data folder, data for Attila, data for Rome 2, and then there's a folder here called campaigns. Uh, so I'm at, en entering a directory. So I'm adding a directory, and the one I want to grab is the main Attila for this tutorial. And go OK, and you can save that. Now we've got the start pause in our pack. Click on it. Then we can just open up down to campaign model, world, uh, faction. And then we can click on a faction. So this is the Allens for Attila. And the key is here. This is what we want to replace. So the one they've got at the moment is the at Jer Alani. And we want to give them our new config. The config key goes in here. So let's grab our config. When you're adding to a start pause, you cannot just copy from your cell here and paste. Uh, after a recent patch in Rome 2 would cause that kind of thing to create a crash because what happens is it copies a new line as well. It doesn't just copy the, the, the data in there, it copies a new line. So what I do to overcome that is I'll copy the cell uh, and then I will go grab Notepad. What have I got? There it is. Uh, and I'll paste it into Notepad. You see how it just comes down to the new line? That's because that's what it's copying included. I'll then select just that top part and I'll go to my start pause again. World, faction array, pick your faction. So we're going to go with Alani this time and we're going to just select it and right click, paste. Now to save the start pause, you actually have to click not into this area here, but back here. Click there and then wait and the start pause takes a little time to uh, change. Oh, 
Yep, okay, when it's red, then you know you can save it. And there we have it. That's all there is to editing the uh, composition of AI armies. So I'll just to reiterate, uh, first the AI will look to complete its template by recruiting units in the various different categories. Categories are here. Uh, sorry, your groups of categories, uh, the different unit groups. It will determine which one to recruit based on the, the quality and probably compared to the unit cost as well. If it cannot, if it's already filled the template or it cannot afford to fill the template, uh, it will then go to the cheapest unit available. Th okay, those groups are assigned to a template. That template is assigned to a config, and that config is assigned to a faction in the start pose. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.